Hello, so today we're going to be doing something new. Today I am going to be talking about video game books or books based on games that I've read. I'm going to walk through each one in approximately the order that I've read them and I'm going to t say my thoughts on them and kind of explain my thoughts on that subgenre of literature because it frankly is perceived as kind of bottom of the barrel stuff when there's some good there's some good ones at least the ones that I've read I'll be honest most of the okay not most of pretty much all of the ones that I've read are pretty strong um uh, sorry my freaking hair pretty strong like books just as books which is surprising but honestly true. So with this book review slash analysis there are going to be some spoilers both for the books and the games somewhat. I'll, I'll try to leave the games unspoiled. What I'll do I'll, I'll be light on the spoilers. It won't be too insane. Like I'll, I'll indirectly reference kind of things that happen towards the end but I won't say the ending because frankly some of these I read a while ago and I don't remember the ending so I can't I can't spoil it, even if I wanted to. But anyway, let's jump right into it. So, the first one I'm going to talk about is the one I showed, Dead Space Martyr. Now, basically what the book is, it's a prequel to the first Dead Space, which right off the bat is interesting because Dead Space as a series has a lot of lore to it. And to have a prequel book, if any series needed a prequel book, it was probably Dead Space. A prequel book, movie, or whatever. And they decided to go with a book. I mean, man, Dead Space is a lot. Because Dead Space has, like, an entire prequel, like, thing, including, like, a movie. It was, like, it was an anime movie called Dead Space Downfall. That was not bad. I'm going off on a tangent, but that movie wasn't bad. Funny enough, it's an uh, EA game. As you can see, it's EA. Back before EA became a bunch of scumbags with loot boxes, all sorts of bullshit. The bullshit that they're in the news for now. But anyway, Dead Space Martyr, back on task. This is when EA was good. Dead Space Martyr was a cool book. I liked it a lot when I read it. I thought the plot was interesting. I thought the character of Michael Altman was... Michael Altman for background, is the uh, the founder of the, the religion that is kind of like one of the main antagonists of the Dead Space series. It's called uh, Unitology, not to be confused with Scientology. It was like a religious cult worships the alien artifact in the games. And what's cool about this story is as an origin story, it is, A, it's pretty detailed meaning not necessarily in terms of the writing but in terms of like the world building and the setting because this takes place first thing in the dead space timeline all sorts of like references to uh things that haven't really happened yet so there's like allusions to things i believe the character ishimura the character who the ishimura is named after is in it i believe either that or he's referenced my biggest co complaint slash critique is that like many video game books, it's not necessarily a brilliantly written fiction. Like, basically what you'd have is you'd have lots of... There's not too much description. Like, you'd get, like, one word to describe a character, and then it would kind of be, like... That would be, like, the only thing that you'd get about them. Like, Michael Altman really is not very well described at all. Then again, frankly, that's okay. Michael Altman appears in the games, like, visually, like, we know what he looks like. So I guess it, it's not really necessary, but there are characters that, like, that's how a lot of characters are described. So that would be the one downside to it. And some of the environments, you don't really get a great feel for the environment. Like, it's not very well described. So what I did was I substituted, like, there's a fantastic scene that, in my mind, was fantastic. It was a scene that was on a beach... And a necromorph, which are the zombie enemies in the game, was on the beach, like, thrashing from a distance, and it was it was uncanny, like, the visual imagery was uncanny there, so it was actually pretty scary. That lent itself well. My thought was that it was during broad daylight, which would make it even creepier, and that's a type of horror that really isn't in Dead Space as much, because it's more of a claustrophobic 
uh, sci-fi, like, alien-inspired scenario. The setting was different enough for you to imagine what the scenes are, but I do wish there was a bit more description of the scenes themselves like like of the the feeling of certain things because that's the thing is ultimately plot wise it's a great book but the sequencing the descriptions of that aren't very strong like they and that'll frankly be a common theme for a lot of these books uh is that the descriptions of environments really aren't that strong so that is dead space martyr good book overall it's competent i would say i would give it a 3.5 out of 5 because it's a it's a really fun read. It's entertaining as hell. But again, the writing is just kind of just gets by. And there are typos in this book. Like I noticed like a handful of typos as I was reading this. It's it's small stuff, but it stands out. Anyway, 3 out of 5. You could say 3.5 if you're a fan of the games like I was. So, yeah, that's Dead Space Martyr. Okay, so keeping with Dead Space, we are now moving on to Dead Space Catalyst, who, which is written by the same person. So this one was clearly, it, A, it's a follow-up, kind of. It's not a, it is a prequel, but it's not a prequel to any of the sp games specifically. This book is, is interesting. And I say interesting in a good way and a, I don't know, way. First of all, I want to say this cover kicks ass. I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but this cover kicks ass just because you basically, you have a guy here and he looks like a guy from the game. Then you have this massive, like, necromorph thing. And it's just this, like, m mess of all sorts of gross, creepy things. It's a great cover art, is basically what I'm getting at. Now, it has worse typos than, than Martyr. Like, there are parts... I, I shit you not, there are parts where I believe... It, it's a story about two brothers. I, I should start... Sorry, I'm derailing. I should start with... The story is about two brothers, yeah, Istvan and Gen Z. And that, right off the bat, is interesting, because Dead Space has never had really brother stories in it. Even, even in the games, even the, all the NPCs, there really was never... Actually, there was one. But anyway, they're not common in Dead Space world. So it's cool to see that. And this book is also pretty scary and pretty tense. It really, what's weird about it though, is it's unclear why it exists. Like Martyr, it, it made sense why that book was made. Because it was a prequel to the entire thing. Like the entire Dead Space uh, story. And it was about unitology. It was about Michael Altman. And those are really key players in the Dead Space lore. This book, it kind of doesn't really address anything directly. It kind of just exists within the Dead Space universe. And that takes away a little bit of the intrigue. Like, I remember when I read this, it kind of took away some of the intrigue of the story. The fact that it's not really directly linked to anything in the games. Apart from, there are some implied links to the games and it has to do with people in this book who can interact with the marker and have some sway over it despite the fact that it's this very very aggressive manipulator you get that so that's interesting i remember it has a really sick ending fight scene it's kind of like for it's not formulaic but it's kind of it goes through the numbers even more than martyr did and it also has more typos than martyr so for example there are scenes where the brothers' names are clearly swapped at one point. Like, in, in a paragraph, they actually swapped the brothers' names, where it would make no sense because we just followed up a line of dialogue from one of the brothers to have his name appear again in that way. So there are some bigger typos that kind of take the immersion, that suck you out of the reading experience. Also, it's printed weird. I don't know if you can see, but, like, yeah, there. Like, the cover is slightly smaller than the book. I don't know if it could be a printing error for this copy, but I just thought I'd point. I'd give this book 2.5 because it's it's good, it's entertaining, but it's not as good as Martyr. So it's kind of like, why am I reading this? What does this do? But overall, not a bad read. There's probably far worse. Okay, so next up is Bioshock Rapture. As you can see, 
This is a big one. This is probably the longest one of all of the ones I've read. 430 page long book. So it's a substantial read and a good one, a damn good book. I said Dead Space was the one that deserved a prequel story the most, but actually I would say Bioshock does as well. Bioshock really deserves a prequel story. It's a really rich world. It's a really w rich story in the game. It's one of the better stories I know of in games. Yeah, it, it definitely deserves that. John Shirley, the author of this book, certainly does it justice because this is probably higher up on my list. I'll rank them at the end, but this will probably be high up on the list because, yeah, it, it's a great story. There's lots of characters. There's lots of perspectives. There's lots of world building on Rapture. There's pretty good descriptions, too, the, better than the Dead Space ones. Also, there's a lot of good connections to, like, the the game. There's all sorts of world building. There's all sorts of, like, references. Like, the historical references in here mean even more than they do in the games, in my opinion. Like, the context of what everything's, what's happening. We get insight into Andrew Ryan, we get insight into Fontaine, Frank Fontaine. We get insight into Bill McDonough. We get insight into all, all the major players from the first game, and even some from the second game. So overall, Bioshock Rapture is a great book. I'd give it a four out of five. It's it's a really good book. It's probably the most solid of all of these. 4.5 if you want to be really generous. Now, it does have continuity errors with the game. I can't get into too much detail because those are spoilers for both items. But yeah, it, it just, it, its biggest problem is it has some continuity errors, but in my eyes, it doesn't step on the story too much in terms of it ultimately doesn't really mean much, especially in, in light of Bioshock Infinite's ending, if you really want to cop out of continuity. That's Bioshock Rapture. Okay, so the final physical book that I'm going to be talking about, um, that I've finished fully, is Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. Now, this book is interesting in that it has some of the same problems, uh, but it also has some good things about it. The, probably the best thing about it was the first half of the book at least nails like the style of the games while still having a story that is actually a thematic point A, point B, point C story, which the games don't have, and that's okay because they're video games. But this book is probably, unfortunately, the weakest one that I've read for a couple of reasons. The first is... The, the story simply isn't all that interesting compared to the others. It's kind of like this pseudo-prequel adaptation thing, and it ties into Sister Location's timeline. It also, without getting into spoilers, has probably the lamest ending of anything ever. Like, I'm sorry, but it was super lame. It was almost like... It was like the ending of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, but without any philosophy behind it. That's the best spoiler-free summary I can give of it. it. It's pretty lame. Now, there are cool references to Sister Location, especially, and they're, they're really small and really easy to miss, much like most of the game's, like, lore. So there's, so that's, it's got that going for it. It's just, it's, it's so... Which is unfortunate because Scott Cawthon helped write this, and his games have great storytelling in my opinion. Now, Sister Location I have some issues with, but it tells its story, even if the story is problematic brilliantly, so I just don't get the same allure from this book. And there's also just, it, it's got some good descriptors, but it's hardly anything noteworthy. Overall, I'd have to give Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes a this is a tough one because i don't know if it's worth i don't know if it's this bad two out of five but i'm wavering on giving it a 2.5 out of five just because it's hard to it's not a bad book by any means 
but it just it gets some crucial things wrong so it's hard to say honestly okay so i don't have a physical copy of the next book or rather books it's a few I don't have a physical copy of it. It is the Drakengard slash Dragon Dragoon side novellas. Now, these were great reads. I'll be honest. I'll say that straight up. They were fantastic. They added all sorts to all of the games in the series, including Nier. I'm also including Nier games. When I say Drakengard, I mean ev all of it. They add a lot. They add a lot to the story, and they're overall, they're really good reads. Now... I can't speak too much to the writing itself. I felt the writing was kind of subpar, but it's hard to tell because they are translations that I read and they're fan translations, so they might not have the same like quality standard of editing that these books, these other books we've discussed have. But the character building and the amount that they add to the games and the, their interesting stories in general, especially like it's just it's fantastic. Now, I'll go through each one briefly. The ones that I read were Drag on Dragoon 1's novella, 2's novella, 3's novella, Nier's novella, and Nier Automata's novella. And each of these novellas are in some way tied to the, the story and the characters of the game. Mostly, like, the first one is tied to... It was tied to... Oh, yeah. The relationship, the love triangle between Furiai, Inuart, and Kaim. So it was, it was about that. It was kind of... And it was interesting because we didn't... In the game, we got that explained to us in exposition. But to see it is a whole nother ball game, and it definitely it was an interesting read. Drakengard 2's novella was interesting as well, in that we got to see, and this is light spoilers, Eris is a goddess. Actually, it's big spoilers, it's like the ending. But anyway, we get to see from the perspective of a goddess what being a goddess feels like in the Drakengard universe, and that is like a person who keeps the world at bay. It's like one of the seals. It's it's basically the magic system in that, what that actually is. Because we do get the idea of burden and and searing pain inflicted by the symbols that like wrap around the the goddess. Like, we get that idea in the game, but to get it described is pretty nice. Drakengard 3's is easily the best one, because it adds so much to that game's awesome, but somewhat rushed story. We get all sorts of character descriptions, we get introduced to characters, each character in the game has a, no a short story, and that's the novella. And it's great. You get five, you get a nice novella with her, the, how crazy she is you get novellas with all of the disciples you get novellas with zero you get novellas with mikhail i think there's even one for michael even though that michael and mikhail are the same person or the same dragon rather it's great it, there you get a, a lot of nice story in there it was it was definitely they also have awesome like little drawings and sketches of of the characters as a prelude to like the reading of the characters like the the story so you get all sorts of great sketches. Nier's is great as well. There's actually several standout character scenes in that. I particularly love anything to do with like Kaine's character building because she's a complex character. She's awesome. And seeing that in the novella was, was great. It, it's a really nice side uh, tie-in. Now, Nier Automata's is interesting because it's hard to read it without spoiling the game and the same kind of goes for near so it's a little weird the near ones are less readily accessible than the drakengard ones than the drakengard proper ones but all in all they're they're really great character pieces and they are surprisingly good consider especially the fan translations are surprisingly good apart from like a couple of typos and weird grammar which I'm willing to forgive because it's a fan translation of Japanese and, you know, it's not formally edited. I didn't read the story sides and I believe it's Dragon Dragoon 
2, I believe it's called. I didn't read those. I read plot summaries of them, and I have mixed opinions. I think 3's is really well done again. It's also weird because it's the only canon one, to my knowledge. And then the others are kind of adaptations. Like, they're all adaptations, but 3's is particularly interesting because of the way the game's endings work. Uh, I would give them collectively because uh, i'll put them all together i'll give them collectively a four out of five they were very great they were interesting and added a lot to the world that the game takes place in the wacky weird world that it takes place in so kudos to the author for that and kudos to yoko taro as well so the final two that i'm gonna address are in progress i'm currently still reading them uh deus ex icarus effect and deus ex blacklight so far, Icarus Effect, I, I'll i be honest, I haven't started Blacklight yet, but Icarus Effect is great. It's likely near the top in terms of these, these books and ranking them. It's got a great pacing, great story, characters are good. It's pretty well described, it's a little scant, but it's well described overall. Its connection to the games is strong. You get development on the tyrants who are like the boss characters in, in Human Revolution. So seeing them developed as more character, like as full characters is great because in the game, they're kind of underexplored and that leads to some problems when, you, when you're fighting them as bosses because as bosses, they're kind of lax as is. I think they're fine but they get the job done and nothing more apart from two of them. There are two of them that are great. But anyway, having a story about them, because one of the two main characters that we follow here is connected to the tyrants, and we get a lot of nice like scenes with him and the tyrants. So there's, there's good stuff there. There's also the conspiracy stuff that's in the... the um, in the games and it's really interesting and detailed in fact the part that i'm on it we're starting to see the conspiracy unravel and it's pretty well done this like this book feels like a book that you could buy even if you're not a fan of the games though honestly being a fan of the games really helps i'd give this one deus ex icarus effect a four out of five maybe even 4.5 if you want to really stretch it it's a good, it's a really good read overall. And that's good because you've got a big, big shoes to fill because that's a classic game that is considered to have a great story. So they definitely did that. So in terms of ranking from worst to best, it is at the bottom, I hate to say it, Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. Coming in right above that is Dead Space Catalyst. And then coming in right after that is Dead Space Martyr. The Drag on Dragoon slash Drakengard novella series. They're great overall. I can't comment too much on the writing. The character building is good, but they aren't really good literary pieces in the same way that the others are. They're great character pieces to connect to the games, but if you're not into the games, you can't really get into them. So that that's the only thing, that's the only drawback with those. Coming in after that is Bioshock Rapture. It's an awesome book, and it is it is well thought out. The characters are great. The world is great. It's It's a good read, and it's very substantial. It's pretty long. So, Bioshock Rapture. And then coming in at the top for me currently is Deus Ex Icarus Effect. It's, it's really strong. It's a really strong read. And I'm, I was pleasantly surprised because for some reason, despite the shoes that it has to fill, I wasn't expecting it to fill them at all. Uh, despite the fact that all of these are pretty good. So, yeah, the to at the top is Icarus Effect. So, what's the key takeaway from this? Well... Video game books can be good. Maybe not movies. I don't know if I agree with that. There are a couple I like, but for reasons that would probably make their own video. Anyway, video game books can be good. And the, at least the ones that I've read are really strong. They aren't necessarily literary masterpieces or anything, but they're good books. So... 
I would recommend them just as I would recommend the games that they're based on. Yeah, that's basically what I have to say about them. I hope you enjoyed this video and hearing me like ramble on about <laughs> about stuff I like. To comment and like and subscribe and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.